Hi there, my name is RustyBot. This lesson focuses on how to make Protoflux interact with an object in the world. To do that, I'm going to need an object in the world. I'll use the developer tool that I have on my tool shelf here and spawned out from the tools folder, the very first one. I'm going to you'll open my context menu and create a new 3D model box. I'm going to use secondary to select that, open the inspector through context, and find the box mesh component. I'm going to swap over to my Protoflux tool, grab the size field on that box mesh, and using my radial, hit drive. So now I have this node, which allows me to directly control that value. Right now it's being driven to zero because this doesn't have an input. So if I make an input by holding primary and then holding secondary, I can set this to something like 0.1, grab this value, put it down here, and 0.2 on the vertical. Now I have this box that's a little bit smaller and slightly elongated. If I want to control this, I'm going to need a bit more complex of a circuit. So I'm going to open my node browser, again make it bigger for the camera, go down to operators, conditional, value conditional, and we'll just get a float for a moment. Double click to spawn that, and make an output, and then three inputs. So a boolean value that controls this node is either true or false. It's a 1 or a 0, it's a yes or a no. It's basically just a binary value. These two float inputs represent numbers. So this could be anything from 50 to negative 7.5. Now, this Boolean input on the conditional controls which value is being output. If it's true, the top value comes out. And if it's false, the bottom value comes out. So essentially, this lets you convert a boolean yes or no into a float yes or no, and you determine what the yes and the no are. Now, in order to drive the cube, this obviously is going to need to be a float 3 version. So I can press secondary to select that node, spawn it out, and then if I take this input, again with primary, and try to plug it in here, it'll convert itself into the right value type. Now I'm going to pull out another input for the condition, and another input for on false. Reorganize that a bit. Now, these are kind of covering up my cube, so I'm just going to move that here. Or, if I don't want to move the cube for whatever reason, you can hold secondary on this circuit, and it'll select them all. Then they can all be moved at once, and you can hold secondary again to deselect. Now I'm going to just plug the output from the conditional into the size, and, well, it's gone, because the false value is zero. So, now what I'm going to do is put the point 0.1 here, let's just fill that up, and maybe make the point 0.2 on the x-axis. So now what I can do is use this conditional, which by extension means using this bool value, to control the size of the cube. It's either vertical when the point 0.2 is coming out, such as right now, or horizontal when the point 0.2 is coming out on the x-axis. And that's the basics of how you control an object with flux. In order to finalize our object, we're going to need to restructure it a little bit. So I'm going to hit this button up here to create a parent of the box, and what that does is it just makes a new empty slot above it. Now, if I grab the box, it disappears out of there, because it's actually being reparented to my hand while I'm holding it, and then when I let go, it gets put back. But the transforms are off, it's slightly mispositioned. The parent is over here. So I'm going to just hit scale, rotation, position, reset on all of those, and now in order to fix this problem, we're going to scroll down, find the grabbable component, get that in our hands just by grabbing the title box there, go up to box parent by double clicking it to select it, and drop the grabbable component on the inspector. Then I'm going to hit move component, and now it's been moved to the other slot. So when I grab this, I have the whole object. I'm going to create a new child of this slot, select that, and rename it scripts. Box parent is going to be renamed to button, and box can just stay how it is. So now we need to be able to take this flux and put it into the object. I'm going to equip the protoflux tool, grab that script slot, hold secondary on my circuit to select it, and then in my context menu, pack into. Now it's all disappeared, but you'll notice that scripts has all of the nodes underneath it. If I grab the script slot and unpack it, there they are. This is how you put your functions into your stuff. So next, we're going to make this thing actually interactable. 
I'm going to double click box to select it, hit attach component. In here, I'm going to go to transform, interaction, touch button, click. So that attaches this component. And you'll notice that when you poke it, you can feel a little bit of haptic feedback. It's not going to come through on the video. If I go back to my node browser, go back, 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 and I go to interaction, button events, and then I spawn out that node by double clicking. This is kind of a hefty one, but it has this button input. If I grab the touch button component and drop that there, this node can now interact with that touch button. If I take out the very first input here, pressed, and then press the button, there it is. That's our pulse. So now we have to use this to control our value. I'm going to delete this display and go back to flow and get data model boolean toggle, which is kind of a mouthful. Most people just call it the boolean latch. Now, this one is pretty fantastic. You're going to use this a lot. It has a boolean output, three inputs, and two pulse outputs. If I click the top one here, the boolean output gets set to true and the top pulses. If I keep doing that, the top keeps pulsing. If I hit the middle one, the middle output will pulse and the boolean will be set to false. So this is like setting it to true, this is setting it to false, and this one is the toggle, hence the name data model boolean toggle. You click that and it sets it to the opposite value and pulses the corresponding output. So I'm going to get rid of all of these, destroy, and take the boolean latch, boolean output, connect that to the conditional, delete this old bool input, move button events over here, and connect pressed to toggle. Now, when I poke the box, it changes size. Simple as that. If I want to make this animation a little bit better and not a static tick tick, then a fun one we can use is math interpolation value smooth lerp. There's a little bit of a hitch when you open some of these, but if I click float, spawn that out, and I'll just put that right after the conditional, and then it takes a speed. So this is how fast it's going to smooth. I'll set it to something like five. And now when I poke the box, whoop, 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 there we go. I'm going to take this circuit as before, grab scripts, hold secondary to select the whole thing, go in my context menu and pack into. And now we have a little box that changes size when you poke it. How about that? I hope this has been a helpful introduction. The next few videos are going to be more fundamental basic utilities, and then we can start getting into how to make your own superpowers.